and welcome back to my channel for the love of organizing. I'm Laura and I share my tips on creating an inspired home and life you'll love with budget-friendly finds. In today's video, I wanted to walk you through our office transformation. Now, I shared my um, thrifted desk makeover in a previous video, but we really wanted to maximize the space for more storage um, and specifically I wanted a home for my books and my sewing machine and fabric. So we had an old hutch that was actually in our garage on the way to Goodwill. And we just kind of gave it an another look and thought maybe with a little chalk paint, because you know I love my chalk paint, and some distressing, uh, this could serve as a good uh, centerpiece um, upon which to build two floating desks. Now I can't take credit for this. Um, I thought of rehabbing the hutch, but my husband dreamed up the entire um, design and um, took the dimensions, went with me to the um, hardware store. We purchased uh, about $40 worth of lumber together and uh, the cost of the chalk paint was, you know, maybe 10 or $12. We used a coupon for Joann's. So for $50, I wanted to show you um, the new space that we created with tons of storage. This hutch had seen better days, but it was sentimental to me since it was a gift from my husband years ago. We gave it two coats of a soft white chalky paint from Folk Art and let it dry overnight. We like to use chalk paint because in almost every case, you don't need to sand or prime the furniture first, which is great. Now we brought the hutch into the office after the paint had dried overnight um, to start work on the floating shelves. We'd already taken measurements, but we checked again and then we stained the floating shelves in a well-ventilated area. As those were drying, you'll notice we already removed the thin pressed backing from the hutch. Uh, my husband had the idea to use repurposed pallet wood there instead. Now, I have to be honest, I was a little skeptical at first, but the results really astounded me. We cleaned the pallet wood up quite a bit after he took it apart then put it outside to dry and gave it a nice stain which you'll see here a little later in the process. Here's a look at the hutch in place and the floating shelves installed. Now it was time to have fun distressing and to get started on the hutch decor. I like to sand first and then work with the clear wax and wood tints for more depth. Here I'm using fine sandpaper to just begin to remove some of the white chalky paint. Um, this exposes the dark original color beneath which I really like and really just sand to your preference. I sand the corners carefully and then just randomly pick places throughout the piece to add little touches and little chips away. The black really stands out so I tried not to do too much sanding, it's kind of easy to get carried away. At this point, I had dust to deal with, so I just removed it with a dry brush and then vacuumed, but do whatever works for you. Now it's time to add a thin layer of the clear wax to the chalk painted surfaces. Use the clear wax that is sold with whatever brand of chalky paint you choose and review the instructions. Um, it's important not to add the wax to your furniture until you know you have the time to move straight into the antique wood tinting process that I'll be showing you next. Um, this way the two can work together beautifully. Um, I just say this because some of the instructions on the clear wax will tell you to let it dry overnight, but we actually want to apply it and while it's still wet, work in that wood tint for the depth and then together they both will dry overnight. I like to apply my clear wax with a paintbrush and I try to spread it pretty thin and work quickly. Then I take out my small paintbrush 
and dip it into the wood tint of my preference. And for this one, I'm using a dark um, brown shade. I'll link all the products below. Um, one section at a time, I just add a little paint with my small brush and then quickly work the tint into the clear wax with a larger brush. Just kind of spreading it and stretching it as desired. Um, this is more of an art than a science. Add more tint as needed, uh, get creative, and really try to enjoy the layering process. Here you can see me working the cabinet fronts in the same technique. You can always take a little away or even brush on a little more white chalk paint the next day if you found you had too heavy a hand, and I had to do that in a few places myself. If you need to, if you find that you've put a little too much of the tint on while everything is still wet, you can actually just grab a fresh brush with some clear wax and try to just lift and stretch and you'll, you'll find that that makes a um, significant difference. I like for the clear and tinted waxes to then dry together as I mentioned. So. Um, Overnight it will feel dry, but it's best to wait two days before placing decor items on the furniture. Um, just because even though it feels dry to the touch after a day, the knickknacks can sometimes stick to the furniture. Now for making use of the hutch. The, fir the first thing I did was bring in these four photo boxes from Michaels. I'm using them for storage instead and they help me limit the amount of craft supplies I have at any given time, which is good for me. <laughs> then I felt like this smaller shelf would be a good place for my faux mercury glass collection. And keeping this shelf shorter also gives me more room for my taller books that I can place below. These stacking letter trays were originally light blue and I used a little leftover turquoise paint from another project to give them an update. And then it was time to bring in some of my all-time favorite creative books. Everything from images of the Italian countryside to books my parents have given me, and of course, lots of arts and crafting tips. Um, there's also several years worth of my beloved moleskin art journals. I decorated the one on the top years ago in an art journal swap that I did with a few friends, which was such a fun experience. A clay birdie by Kelly Teal Studio is perched sweetly there as well. On the top shelf, I gave two inexpensive black frames a facelift with some turquoise chalk paint and the same antique wax technique I just shared with you. On the left is an art journal spread my friend Kelly made for me. And then over on the right, a watercolor page I made around the same time with lyrics to a favorite song at that moment. I'm sure I'll be switching these out with each new season. Now my next project will be getting the floating desks in order. We're making wooden crates to go on top, uh, well my husband is, and we'll be looking for chairs to tuck underneath. Um, it's just so nice to have a space for my sewing machine and my crafts again, and I may do a follow-up video once I get everything situated on the floating shelves as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, of course, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, but my new favorite place is actually Snapchat. And my username over there is Love Organizing. So if you're on Snapchat, be sure to add me or comment below with your Snapchat username and I will add you. Uh, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next video.